Well, deja vu. Wait, 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 let me take all this away. Oh, gee, this is the phase. So, Clay, I'm, I'm recording this. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so, unusual. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we don't rehearse any of this. People think we rehearse, we don't. But tell us about our trips. See, I come on these trips. I, I oh, the trip was wonderful. Oh, wait, I mean, you, you interrupt. You're stepping. You're stepping on my lines. Okay, I was in the, I was talking. I was giving a presentation. Sorry, sir. So I know nothing about these trips. I like to keep it that way. So I know we're in Vegas right now. We arrived last night. Then we're taking a cruise. But I go out of my way. Are you awake, Uncle? Any wake? No, I'm concentrating. Um, so where are we going? Tell tell the peanut gallery. I mean, tell the people who are watching. Where where we're going? Why we're here? And what what our itinerary is? However, I did suggest you suggest that we have to go out and buy some supplies, and I said Walmart because you've said Walmart to me for twenty years. You and Lois go to Walmart for twenty years, and today you tell me you want to go to Target, and I feel that's cheating. You're being disrespectful to Walmart after all these years. You're cheating on Walmart. Why have you changed the Target from Walmart? Go. Well, thank you. Well, that's I. That's enough. That's enough. Next question. Why exactly do you like? Do you like this hotel, the Hampton Inns? Well, I uh, think that it's nice. It's an occasion. It's a suite. We have two beds. Okay. I'm trying to keep it brief. You always tell me be brief. No, no. I try to debrief you. Oh. You don't have to keep. We, we debrief somebody. You don't right. have to keep it brief. All right. Then you I'll can make a, do a lengthy debriefing. I'm right. going to change to boxes. All right. I, I will keep it keep it boxes as opposed to briefs. So we're here. And what what is our itinerary? Our itinerary for today is uh, after we... Not, not for today, for the trip. Oh, for the trip. It's to have as good a time as we can possibly have, see as much as we could see, win as much as we can, and then go on to the next step. Now, what do you mean we, we can win? Are you going to be playing blackjack all of a sudden? Well, I think that I uh, did very well the last time, and I have that piece of paper that tells me when to bet, where to bet, when to hold, where to hold. But, I know what to hold. But, but, but when you play blackjack, usually it's with my money, so how can you possibly lose? I mean, you have a very good situation. I <laughs> never lost any of my money, but I've also won a lot of money. Yes, I let you keep the winnings, but you can't lose. Well, so you, you have a very good situation here in Vegas. Of all the people in Vegas, you probably have the best. We rented a Maxima car, which is probably one of the top cars. We're staying in a hotel with a suite. We eat in the finest buffets, and I get money to play blackjack. Do you know why I go on these trips? Bribery. It's simple bribery. No, because me and Michael, we have a good time together. You know, we, we really don't, but we make these videos so people feel we have a relationship. But the moment we turn off the camera, it's like... You know, oh, it's like murder. I mean, you sick. sleep with the room like frigid, and I like tropical. <laughs> but I put the black mask on you when I sleep. Uh, yes, let me go get it to show the, show the people. So well, this way I can keep the lights on and see how to dress, because I have to put on multiple layers of clothing at night when Michael goes to sleep, and I need the lights on to see. I go to sleep like somebody would go out in the winter. What? Well, I can't find it's it. It's probably on the windowsill, Michael. You, you know, I you, have to help him. You know where anything. my stuff is, do you? Yes. Uh, t tell me if it's on the windowsill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael, I checked out everything, so anything you want to know, just say, oh, you're back? I'm back already. Oh, I thought I had a free hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you thought you had your own show? Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Eddie thought he had his own show, but no, I'm back. How's that? A little bit younger now? I don't know. Let see, me I wear this. Place. Check, check it out. Oh, wow. Yeah, I put this over my eyes, you see, so it becomes like dark. That, yes. I, so I can sleep morning, noon, and night that way. You know? Well, should we tell the people what time you woke up today? Sure, if anybody's still watching. At 12.30. PM. Wow, but don't forget, it's really 1.30 p.m. because we're putting our clocks ahead. Right, but Michael did, in all fairness, went to sleep 5 a.m. New York time. I didn't even know that. And then I woke up, went to the buffet here. They have a buffet here at the right. Hampton Inn, Suites. And then I went back to sleep, right? Right. And now I'm awake. I have no idea what time it is now. What time is it? Well, while he was sleeping, it's 1.41 if you oh. want to look at the microwave. It's 1.41, but while Michael was sleeping, of course, 
I checked out all the shows to see which we can go to, but I also programmed in to my smartphone how to get to Target, how to get to Walmart, how to get to anywhere you want to go. Well, why would we go to go to both? No, Target. no, we're just going to Walmart. Oh, so I, I thought to you Walmart. had. Yeah, I thought you had a preference. I didn't know. No, no, my preference is to do what we want and to. Probably to Walgreens, but I think you can get anything in Walmart that you might find in Walgreens. Well, you know, Lois and I moved. I've been spending the last, I guess, month and a half carrying boxes and working my hands. Literally, the cracks. There's cracks in the skin. I don't know if you can see. This. All my hands. I'm like, oh, look, that's very deep. See, if you look right, well, you really can't see it. I'm not giving you the finger or anything, but see, there's cracks. All my fingers have the little cracks in them. Can you see? Yeah. Because I've been working so hard, it's been so cold and dry that my skin cracks. So I have Vaseline. <laughs> I got. I put Vaseline all over my feet. You know foot there. And oh. I put Vaseline all, all over my hands, mm. which is good to ruin the hotel sheets because when I do this at home, Lois really does not like that. So I, I lather up with the Vaseline yeah. because it keeps my skin now from, from cracking and getting dry. I have time to relax and do that with you. But when he's driving and his hands are full of Vaseline, if he has to make a right turn, his hands are moving frantically and we keep going straight. Well, it's like a magic trick. You see my hands going like this, yeah. but the wheel is not turning. I told him, wipe your hands. But, but I got the insurance, so we don't, have, we don't really have to be concerned about that. You just said that the seat is so deep that you can't get up. Yeah, I feel like an old person. Do you man. see one cushion is missing? Yeah, you're sitting on two cushions. That's right. That's this why you like you're so sleeping. Tall. Do you think the world stops? Yeah, and I look like a shrimp here. You're, Uncle Wendy's sitting on two cushions on this couch. So I'm sitting on one, and I look like a little baby. Well, that's the trick but I see, saw on television. That's right. See, now, if I did what you do, see, I can't get up because you took away my pillow. Now, you see, if I put pillows like you do and sit next to you, and you see, now I will fit. See, see, this is what Uncle Eddie does. He sits on different pillows. So now, now I look like I'm bigger. You look at shrimp now. You, well, you yours, is, like yours is artificial. Mine is reality. No, you're sitting on two pillows. That's why you make me look teeny all the time. Except you know? in the stomach. Yeah, the stomach, you're still the king. No, no, no. Oh, I'm the king. <laughs> you're the queen? <laughs> So anyway, a lot we of don't people, use the word queen today. A lot of you people, want to be politically correct? A lot of people don't think we're gay when we're here because like, when we play blackjack, they, they look at it like you're the, the, the wealthy older man and I'm like your pimperini, whatever you call I'm some kind no, of kid no, running no. around here who does whatever you want. I give you money. I help you play blackjack. It looks like you own me. Yes, and because people you think, are my wife. I'm the husband. People, people. <laughs> I'm the husband. <laughs> my wife takes good care of me. I, I, I now put out to you, <laughs> uncle, man and man. No, uncle, uncle and niece and, and nephew. Uncle no, and niece, niece. Of, uncle niece. And nephew. You know. So you think anybody's still watching? <laughs> I'm getting hungry, Michael. I said, look, lady, before we go to the buffet, but there's still the lunch buffet. You see, and we don't really like the lunch buffets because the, the dinner buffets, in addition to being about 50 bucks a person, are very, very good. Now, for 50 bucks, we're talking here, you get lobster, shrimp, you get everything. Oh, yeah. They, they, uh, they actually, instead of places where you sit, chairs, there's no chairs at this buffet. They're toilets. Every... <laughs> Every table, there's six toilets around. You sit on the toilet and you eat the buffet and you do shitterini right there at, at the... Uh, no, the buffet is very good. That's a, you know it's a good buffet when you have a toilet, you're sitting on a toilet. Mm -hmm. That means they really want you to eat. You know? Well, you feel flushed when you're in a place like that. You see a what? It's very rich, so you, you feel flushed sitting on a toilet. Oh, you mean like the throne? I, anyway, you want to make a joke here between... I hope you're going to make a joke between throne, toilet, king... No, flush no. and toilet, flush. Oh, you went the flush route. The flush yeah. route. Okay. Well, Speaking okay. of flush, okay. Uh, you know, Jerry lived in Flushing, I think, with Sue at one time. You know, you know Sue was voted the prettiest girl in Queens College. Did you know that? No, I didn't. She was. When she was young and just had met Jerry, she was the, the queen of Queens College. Wow. The queen of Queens. Um, and, you know, at the end of this, we're going to do a little tribute to Jerry that I put together. So we haven't oh. forgotten about Jerry, oh. and we think about that. So so if you watch long enough, we'll get to the, the tribute of Jerry. And what, what are, when, you know, when I mentioned Jerry to you, this is, uh, Uncle Lenny's not rehearsed this, I mean, what are your thoughts of Jerry when I first say, what are, what are your, your tribute to Jerry? 
Jerry is called my stealth nephew. And the reason for that now is... Now, the word was stealth, you're saying? S-T-E-A-L-T-H. I can't really see that in my mind. That is correct, because well, I can't the see only it. time oh, that I made it's contact it's with... Okay, you're talking sorry. over this. I'm so sorry, Uncle Eddie. <laughs> okay. Is when he was stuck in traffic, and then he would call me on the phone. And I would say, Jerry... You're like my stealth nephew. I hear you, but I never see you. But eventually he came around, and every time he was in Glen Oaks, he stopped in to see me, which was quite frequent. No, we, we kidded each other. Yeah. And um, he had the car phone. You know, people would say, Jerry would call you on the car phone. The car phones existed, I think, when I was like 27 years old. I had one with a big gigantic box in the trunk. Oh, yeah. And then they had the phone in the car. So I don't know what a car phone was doing, but Jerry, if Jerry had a car phone that could play Fox News, Jerry was a happy man. <laughs> Fox News and a car phone. And he had everything he needed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I don't know what to do. My phone is ringing while I'm on the air with you. Answer it. I'll, I'll add lib. I'll fill in. Why don't you subtract lib? All right. Now, he's getting up and I'm here. But he'll probably sit on the couch so that he doesn't lose any face time. Look, he deleted the call. He didn't accept <laughs> it. That was the banker calling. It was Obama. Obama was calling me asking me about for advice with ISIS. Oh, okay. So I said, listen, first of all, don't call him ISIS because it's a compliment to say No, that he this. said ISIS. Should he take vanilla ISIS or raspberry? The guy is outside with the push cart. And he was ill. He got the ice. shaved ice, so he wants to know. And ice ill, too. But why, why call them the you know, Islamic State? Isn't that a compliment? Is this a diplo... Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. What do you call uh, it? I will finish the word. A political. This is not a political conversation. This is we're doing Fox News for Jerry. No, you were going to do something for Jerry. You were going to make a statement. I, I am. I'm doing it by, we're going to be Fox News for five oh, minutes. Uh, okay. No, no, no. I, I don't like political statements. Well, there's nothing you can do about yeah, it. The camera's yeah, over there. You can't reach it. I control I know, the technology. But, but, you're, uh, you're powerless. People get offended. Well, let me finish what I'm saying. I don't want to offend anybody. Well, you don't have to. Then you can just take your hat and go like this. So listen, let me. Uh, no, but I mean, why, the, why are we calling them the Islamic State? That's a compliment. Why are we saying the Islamic State? You're already giving them what they want. They want an Islamic State. It's like calling Hitler's regime the domination of the world. But why are we complimenting them with that? Well, because that was uh, what the script calls for, or the teleprompter, and you're reading off the teleprompter. Yeah, why well, we call them disgusting savages? Why we call them the Islamic State? That's well, what no. they want. We're giving them what they want before they even got it. Give them whatever they want. All right, so Jerry, that was your uh, Fox News uh, thing. And I, I, would, I would have delivered it on my car phone, but even the antique places here in Vegas, they don't carry car phones anymore. They're like 50 years old, and they got rid of the car phone. I don't know what your car phone looked like. But, you know, whatever. It was a big box. Yeah. You big, had it on his shoulder. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. I could actually take it out the of the battery car. battery was on his shoulder. Remember that? I could take it out of the car and put it around my neck and carry my car phone. It weighed about 40, 50 yeah. pounds. Yeah. You know, but that's what I think of, Jerry. I think of the car phone and the Fox News, you know. And, um, and of course, the, the And dog, his children. Uh, he had wonderful wife and wonderful children. He and took the words right out of my mouth. Now okay. I met them, wonderful grandchildren. I'm getting to know who they are. It is complicated for us at this end because they keep having different kids, and I think. Well, I, I think told them each to Denise take a family two, picture. Right? Denise has two. Ray has four. Mark has one, I believe. Denise I, has, I believe, two girls. Renee has two boys and a girl. I don't know about. Maybe she has a younger. I thought she has four. Maybe kids. one was away in college. No, I doubt it. They would have been there. Oh, I don't know. And Mark has one, eight-year-old by the name of Jacob. Very cute, very nice, well-spoken kid. Right, right. And you know, today, Sunday, uh, Saturday, Lois and Joni were gonna go out to the shiver that Sue was having. I right. think they're doing it Sunday. Bobby said oh. he's going Sunday. Well, maybe they'd go tomorrow, but I think today they're having trouble getting out there. So we'll see if, if the timing works for something with the train. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what's going on here in Vegas. And we haven't even gone out yet to the buffet, as Uncle Lenny would say. And yes. the nighttime buffets were better, so at 5 o'clock you get the nighttime buffet. Yes, but you see, we have to think about, let's see, we got up yesterday very early in the morning, like 5 o'clock in the morning, to take care, finish packing, even though the plane left at 5. Well, the plane left at 5.49 at night. You woke up at 5 in the morning to start packing? No, you no, to finish hours. packing, you know, to change out and do a lot of little things. So uh, I didn't have breakfast because I had finished everything and thrown out, you know, what would be spoiled. 
However, on the plane, they were generous. They gave me a Diet Coke. I said, uh, don't you give out pretzels? Yes, if you want to buy the package, $8. I said, no, I'll pass. And then, after we landed, Michael and I were both hungry, so we found a good McDonald's. I had a, not a big chicken sandwich with a small French fries. So that's the total amount of food that I have. Michael bought me a banana from the buffet, but it's green bananas. If I live long enough to see it ripen, I'll eat it. And, uh, he said to me, at my age, you don't bring green bananas, Michael. You don't at my age, you don't bring a person with a green banana. We don't know if we can stay long enough to ripe, <laughs> watch it ripen. Anyway, I mean, uh, to me, I would go to the lunch buffet but we're going to go shopping first. I think that's more important. I'll probably get a chocolate bar or something like that in Walmart. Yeah, then we'll... Um... You know, I'm diabetic and I really have to eat. Otherwise, my blood sugar goes way down. But So we have to end this quick video? No, no, no. Just no, to no, feed you? No. If I slump over, Michael feed me a... We have to... Anything. I'll yeah, have, anything uh, that's sweet. I have a banana. <laughs> so I have to feed your face, basically, to a... Uh, the rush is... Wonderful video that people just watch with intense interest to feed you. Just one thing. No mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Oh, go ahead. That's too personal. Yeah, well, you know, that might deserve cutting. I might have to go to the cutting room floor with that comment. All right. You know, that plus the marriage thing. It's got a little scary here. Okay, so I think we're done. We've, we've bored enough people, and we've, we've probably given them enough time to be bored. You know, it's not easy to bore people for this amount of time and have them still be watching while they're purposely being bored. Oh, yes. All right, so we'll go to the commercial break, and we'll let the people do whatever yeah, yeah. they want. Well, no, we'll go to the tribute, so we'll probably uh, go to the... Okay, the uh, tribute. With the, with the limited resources I have, I'll do the best tribute I can do. You know? Okay. Okay, everybody, so um, we'll... we'll Talk to you soon. Uh, we, we don't even know what we're Did doing. you want to make a tribute to Jerry? No, I, that's not. <laughs> I mean, what were you talking about tribute? We're, we're not in the tribute. <laughs> we're, we're not in it. Where like, is it? I was going to make it just myself based on some pictures I had. Oh. See, we're not, we're not the oh. tribute. I was, oh. We're the introduction. It's like the Britney Spears show. We, we introduced the star. Oh, so I we're going to introduce Jerry with the tribute. We're here to introduce. Oh. But the tribute has nothing to do with us. I see. So you wanted to do a tribute, but I thought you already did. No, I already did my tribute. Yeah, yeah and I, I did mine. So we're done with that. We're done. So now I would go to the pictures. No, I'm done. You're Brad Street. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I think uh, I think that's it. So just so you give people the itinerary again, we're here in Vegas till when? Just give them a quick where we're going. All right. We have to be in San Francisco in about a week's time. A week from now. And it's a 600 mile trip. Wow. So we'll probably take two days to travel. We might even take one extra day to be in San Francisco. Wait, 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 you can't take two extra days and then take an extra day. So it'd be easier to just say three extra days. You don't have to go two extra days, one extra day. Just add them up, because they're extra days. You can add up the extras. No, 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 two of the days are traveling days. We gotta go through Barstow, and we're taking the scenic route. Well, we don't have to. We have to go from Vegas to San Francisco somehow by car. Yes. There's a lot of routes we can take. Well, not too many. Well, can you be more specific? Yes, you gotta go through Barstow. You have to? Can't... No, you can go up to five and go yeah. through, you know, along the mountains. The mountain. Oh, the Donna Pass. Yes. No, 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 no. Come on, you can make an eat me joke. There's something you could do there with the Donna Pass. Yes, I passed the Donna Pass. No. <laughs> you passed on that joke. All right, so we probably take two days to travel, so I didn't consider that extra days. Okay. That's travel time. Uh, all right, but so we have to be in San Francisco in a week. Right. But we're already finding there aren't too many um, shows here we like. I mean, we can't find anything other than the Chippendales. There's nothing we want to see. No, no. I like to see a nice, nice show about the history of Las Vegas. We have all the different magazines here, Franco, and but so far, it's a, the only history of, of Las Vegas is Bugley Siegel stopped in the middle of nowhere, set up a casino, and now you have the fifth busiest airport city in, in America. It's amazing. That's the history of uh, Bugsy Siegel stopped here. Everybody saw Godfather. They know what the story is, Michael. Oh, I didn't know. But here's in my. Hip pocket, I have a list of buffets. Oh, uh, can I show that to the camera? Yeah. The people don't really trust you. You know, they want to be able to see for themselves. You know. Okay. So you see, you can see all, you can see it's all the buffets. 
Okay, so which one are we going to first? Then? I mean, well, for, we had a good experience with Rio. My little uncle. Uh, my wife. Rio. Rio. What's Rio? Who owns Rio? Wynn? No, Wynn doesn't own Rio. Well, I don't owns, know who owns well, We have to know who owns it. Is it Donald Trump or Wynn? I can't, I can't take their money if I don't know who I'm taking from. I win, you know. I win a lot. I play this game called Switch, where you get two hands of blackjack, but then you're allowed to switch them. So... If you get a 10 and a 10... Oh, I know. And a, a, you know and a, a, uh, Mr. Charles Grand owns Rio. Oh, okay. They were going to call it the Rio Grand, but that <laughs> name was taken. <laughs> That's a good one, but there is a Grand Hotel. So, anyway, it's a very good game because you can switch your hands and play two hands of blackjack. So I usually play with one hand. I keep one hand in the pocket holding on to Michael's money. <laughs> but if you get, like, two 10s on this hand... And an eight and eight on this hand, don't forget, he's sleeping. Not and sleeping. Bored. I think my sugar has gone down. Yeah, we there. have to I'm eat get to a out. buffet. Right. No, we have to go shop first. Okay. I got 202. Well, you haven't changed the clocks yet. It's really 302. We're going to oh, lose okay. an hour tonight. No, that's yeah. tonight. What's doing yeah. tonight is tonight, remember. But I have a question for you. If you're bored out of your mind like we might be, and you lose an hour, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's a bad thing if you can't find it, but you keep looking long enough, you'll see in November, I think, you can find it again. The, the hour. That right. you lost. But, but if you're bored and you lose an hour, it, it could be a good thing. I never get bored. Oh, I thought I was already getting... I always have myself to talk to, and I enjoy talking to myself. I, I can tell, but now that we have the video, you can watch this over and over. That's the same idea. I can't because it's not only me in the video. You mean I'm, I'm, ruining, I'm ruining your video? Well, you're taking away from my uh, grandeur. No, sorry about that. By the way, by coincidence, you put on okay. this out the call. It went away, a voicemail. Obama is calling you. He wants to know what to do about ISIS. Well, I would consult with putting... Jerry. Jerry would, Fox, Fox News would, would give Jerry that answer. No, but... he wants to know. The guy is shaving the ice in the truck, and he wants to know, should he take vanilla or raspberry or lemon? I got one more ISIS thought. Remember at the beginning, they stole our tanks and they stole our guns, and, and they were using them against us? And I think a tank cost, what, $20 million. Now... I think I have a bicycle that has a GPS unit in it, so I can find it if it gets stolen. Now, do you think anybody in the U.S. government, when they built a $20 million tank, would put in a GPS in a few places that might hit, hide it, so people couldn't steal our tank and use it against us? I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't they do that? And when Did it, you want an answer, or is that a rhetorical question? Well, no, no. With you, I always ask rhetorical questions. However, in this particular case, because we're on video, and I don't want to get accused of anything, I would like this to be a non-rhetorical question, meaning you have to now answer it. Well, because these kids are not soldiers in the true sense of the word, with a government, uh, with uniforms and equipment. These are kids that are running around, and there is no rules to as what they have done before, so you can't defend against it. They're not fighting. They're like fighting from house to house or from street to street. They're not advancing like an army does. What the hell is he talking about? Is that, well, I'm you, talking about... What are you talking about? A teenager goes from his living room in Glendale, California to the battlefield of ISIS and suddenly he's a trained professional soldier who knows how to shoot with accuracy, knows what to do? Did you see how many shots are generally fired within a second? You don't have to be accurate. Do you ever watch the military channel? We have guns that shoot around corners. You never have to show your face. You go, you look over, the gun goes around the corner. That was an so, Israeli invention, yeah. and it's no longer history. What, what did you say the channel was? Military. It's no longer military channel. That's the, off the air. Wait, wait. The military channel is history? No, yes. It's, 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 wait, which is it? The military channel is now American Heroes Channel. That can't be. So you're saying the military channel is gone. The military, the military channel is now history. Well, history is a different channel, but it is, in a sense... History, because it's now called American Heroes Channel. Okay, so the History Channel, it is in history, because it's now no longer in existence. So the Military Channel no longer exists, so now it's the Military Channel. It's the History Channel, because it's in history. No. It's history. It's history. Uh, right. Who's on first? Okay, so love you, Jerry, and his lovely family. Um, I'll put on the tribute now, if my Uncle Lenny is done explaining the politics of ISIS. But if you are done, then I will... Cut to the tribute. But if you're not done, I'll go another hour. No, so. I'm done. Cut to the tribute. But of course, when you're watching this, after the camera Whatever. goes...
Blank. Nobody's still watching this. If you believe yeah. some idiot is still watching this, you're crazy. I mean, you're, you're nuts thinking some human being still has this on. But in actuality, once he shuts this off, we're going out shopping, we're going out eating, we're going out sightseeing, and probably 11 o'clock tonight, he'll do the tribute. So you will think because it's the next sequence, he did it right away. And why do you think when we go out shopping, I'm going to turn this off? If these people want to torture themselves by watching us speak, why not just let the camera run on the couch? They could count your pillows and my pillows, see who's really big. All right, so this down. is torture. You know, this is a form of water torture with video. E-N-D. And um, when they put the, the Guantanamo Bay people, is it Guantanamo Bay? F-I-N-I-S. They could play this video over and over, and this would be considered a form. Au revoir. How many lines? This is an English, English-speaking video. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> can you speak to the one language I can barely speak? Hasta la banana. <laughs> All right, so um, one more question. Hacienda. <laughs> I think Hacienda means house. <laughs> so, Come one, and tie your shoe. What, one That's more, French. One more question. Polyvu Francis? <laughs> See, how could we rehearse this? It would be like, a, we'd have to have a script a mile long. I mean, no, no, well, only I do not rehearse. Now, on this trip, I'd like people to make one calculation, one guesstimate, one guess. How many strangers do we think Uncle Lenny is going to talk to on this trip? I will give you a hint. The number will be between 10,000 and 300,000. But we should do a lottery, a family lottery one day, where you guys can send in how many strangers Uncle Lenny will speak to? And believe me, he picks the strangest strangers. None of these are normal people. That he talks to, and they all love him. They all talk to him like they've known him, like, like he's their Uncle Lenny. We call him Uncle Lenny, even to the strangers. And um, I, we should do a lottery like that, because people could win some big money here if they guess it right on the nose. You know. So do you plan on being particularly social this trip and speak to between, let's say, 50,000? Or unsocial, maybe speak to 44,500. I only speak to perfect strangers, so I keep searching for the one perfect stranger. Well, my, my experience is that not only have they not been perfect, they've been strange. Well, I see, like, I feel when you're not around, you know, I miss you, so I have to find somebody to sort of become you. Okay, so you want a surrogate. Oh, that's the word. A surrogate yeah. nephew. Surrogate. All right, look. Oh, okay. If anybody out there wants to apply to the job of Surrogate Network, call this number, 555-1718, and we will put you into that job. Now, you know John Stewart's leaving TV. Why don't we send this in? I just realized this is a brilliant idea. Send this, is, send this in as an audition tape. We could be the next John Stewart's with an S. They can't afford me. <laughs>